Okay, so I actually want to join this conversation just because I think it is very interesting. Okay, so virtually what happened is there's this white woman who's living in Portland, Oregon, and she's married to a black guy and they have their family of seven, it sounds like. they He had a son, she had two children. Now they're having three children together. So it looks like their family is eight of them, but there are six children or whatever, and she's pregnant right now. That's what makes the six kid. I think those are the right statistics. Anyway, there's like two sides of the story. So she shows these TikTok videos of how all of these people are living in a one bedroom apartment and the, there's just obviously no space for anything. But also it isn't even that the kids are all like, they haven't created some sort of living situation where there's like eight beds or something. So there's like a whole bunk bed situation. It's like the parents are living in the um, master bedroom and um, in their like king size bed or whatever, in their large bed. They've got like a PS3, some sort of gaming console. And then the kids are living in the like kitchen space. And so that's what people are just like pissed. They're like, oh my God, like they're so poor. This is awful. This is poverty. And now it looks like some other woman has come on to try to defend her, defend the family and say like, oh, well, they're healthy. Everyone's like happy. So everyone's safe. Um, and I just kind of want to, first of all, um, I want to remind everyone of an old film. This is an American classic. It's called X, Mal the Malcolm X movie. There's a book too. But one scene in the Malcolm X movie stood out a lot and I made another video about that. Please check the description box. But virtually what happens is um, like Mal the social workers come and take away Malcolm and his, because Malcolm X his dad and mother ended up having like I want to say they had like eight kids or something between them but then supposedly like the Ku Klux Klan came in the middle of the night and killed his father um because he was like an activist that's how the story kind of goes anyway so the next like one day later the social welfare program comes to Malcolm X's mother's house and they literally say, hey, uh, you are not financially able to take care of these children and therefore we are taking the children away. And so they, they then this is like, I don't know, 20 hours or something after the father died, uh, they, uh, social services came and took away those children. But Malcolm X's mother was black. So then, you know, Malcolm X's mother, she's so d distressed by this, right? So she, is she just like literally goes into, they put her in a mental institution after they, they took away her children. So this is a very common fate. There's like three other movies about black celebrities that this happened to. It happened to uh, Dorothy Dandridge. You can go watch the movie to see that one for yourself. There's this other movie. There's two other like old black classic movies and the same story kept happening social services comes takes away a black mother's children and then they put the black mother in a psychiatric institution and call her crazy <laughs> meanwhile uh there, there's this white woman now on tiktok so now she's making like she's gonna be like a mother influencer or something <laughs> she's got nine eight kids six six kids living by a literal oven it sounds like the kids have lice <laughs> in a one bedroom apartment. So obviously social services knows about this, but nobody's come to take her children away, why? I'm not gonna say it's because she's white, but I think we can pretty much tell that that actually is the case. I think that there's a couple issues here. First of all, I think that it's a good, this is a really good opportunity for women, child-free women, women with a couple, like there's so many mothers, black mothers specifically who've come out and made commentary videos about that that I feel like everyone should watch and listen to. People talked about why they had children, how they made the decision to do it, kind of socioeconomic situations, how they've gotten out of them, how, how people are, people are basically, women are basically coming on and talking about how and why they are making decisions, reproductive decisions 
based on economic factors. Now, one thing that's kind of interesting about this whole conversation is like, why this guy doesn't get a second job and then why they don't also turn the master bed bedroom into like just a bedroom for everyone. Just create basically a, a whole bunch of bunk bed situations al aligning the walls. Um, I mean, there are many ways for not that much money where I feel like for a thousand dollars, she could get eight beds and an infant crib. She might have to do a lot of building and stuff, but I mean, <laughs> It could, she could turn that one master bedroom into a space with eight places for sleeping. But instead they have like a PS3 and a very large television and stuff. And I just, I feel like rightfully so, many people are saying that they need to get rid of that PS3 and go buy furniture for those kids. Yeah, and this also sounds like she's got two cats. Um, they've got a lot going on. And it is a little bit surprising that like, CPS hasn't stepped in, but I, uh, so it did sound like this is happening in Oregon and I just want to read something that I found. Um, it was about like the definition of uh, child abuse, um, specifically in um, Oregon. I have to use Safari because I didn't download. Okay, so um, I will put this in um, the description box, but it says, as already mentioned, neglect is the single most common form of abuse seen in Oregon. Failure of a parent or guardian to provide adequate food, clothing, a safe shelter, supervision, and medical care all constitute neglect. In addition, while all children will be involved in accidents causing injuries, if they occur too frequently, this can be considered a result of the child being neglected. Um, so uh, just in terms of that, I kind of want to say I am. Well, I don't know, we haven't seen anything yet except that those kids had mice or something, but they're living in the kitchen space. And the reason like, um, the American sort of development of housing units has separated certain rooms like the bathroom, the laundry room, the kitchen into particular living spaces based on the appliances needed in those living spaces. So given that currently the children are sleeping in the kitchen, it's very likely that someone's gonna, you know, hit the oven and the gas pipe's gonna come on and then they might die of you know carbon monoxide poisoning who knows do they you know or you know someone might get i don't know might hit a pipe or something by the oven and it blows up like there's just it's like really unsafe to be sleeping in a kitchen that's why they make it a kitchen and not a sleeping space the sleeping the live your bedroom should basically only have like your bed and maybe like a little mantle to put your phone or something but like bedrooms are for sleeping kitchens are for cooking children shouldn't be living in kitchens that is unsafe but you know safety requirements clearly don't apply to poor white mothers in america because this has been going on for a while right we've had a lot of examples where you know white women are raising their children in trailer homes all over the country i guess you'd be surprised with how many people are growing up that way and nobody's really coming for them like it's just kind of like this is fine this is what's happening and i don't know um i think that we're, there's always going to be like a population of poor people in the country i just hope to not see any more black poor people in the country right i feel like and what's so interesting is I feel like this is kind of happening, right? Because a lot of the like would-be poverty-stricken Black mothers have either resorted to Planned Parenthood or they have just literally economically risen themselves toward the lower middle class or the middle class. And now these like the new poor people are, it's kind of interesting. It's like women like this, right? Who are having 
nine, ten kids, right? So now these women are living in poverty. It's also like just immigrants. Immigrants are coming in and they've been doing it for a while. Their, their levels of poverty are so like multifaceted. And I feel like this is something I have been talking about too, because I kept wondering why multiculturalism became the thing in like public schools. And I thought, you know, my multicultural story with just having, you know, like one parent who's from continental Africa, you know, that would make me multicultural, but no, because I wasn't like a dual parent immigrant situation. And my one of my parents has a very long history in America. Um, you know, my cultural story didn't count. I don't have enough cultural credit here. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So now it's, you gotta be like all fresh off the boat, right? So if you're like a fresh off the boat immigrant now and you have all of these like cultural stories and you're sending money back to your family in the Philippines or, you know, Cuba or some shit, you qualify, you know? So now all the schools, like I, I um, Actually, you can do this. You could do this for yourself and just go see. Go to a school in um, a lower income neighborhood or really, uh, it's like all the metro neighborhoods really around America at this point. They're full of immigrant communities of one particular cultural group. In downtown Oakland, it's the sort of whiter Asians. In East Oakland, it's like Mexicans, like Latinx. So these schools have primary languages spoken now. It's Spanish in um, East Oakland. It's like J uh, Japanese or Mandarin in downtown Oakland. And it sounds like um, it's Somali in, uh, I was just reading about this, in Pennsylvania, is it? There's like a neighborhood over there. Um, <laughs> I think everybody feels like they deserve their opportunity from the developing world into America. And I've said it once, I'll say it a, it a million times. I think immigration is the biggest issue tackling this country. Um, and I don't know, it doesn't really feel like anybody cares. Well, not anybody. I, I do think that there are some Americans who kind of understand how the country is rhetorically supposed to work and then i think there's a whole other thing going on where we are start especially like black americans are starting to see the hypocrisy of the double standard play out specifically in this particular case where you have a white mother who is clearly like neglecting her children i'm sorry like you don't have seven children and no money and be able to like provide like she she can't you can't even provide adequate like bedding for them so therefore you can't provide adequate shelter now we see what the laws are <laughs> like we see like that clearly they don't apply to her and nobody is you know i don't even want to force it i think she should maintain i think she should continue to like have and love her children and i i don't know i i think it's i don't I don't think it's worthwhile to have poor children in America. I just don't. I think that the struggles that you're going to encounter are just too overwhelming. And I think that there's this idea that the social welfare programs will end up benefiting these children. And I feel like people don't understand what the middle class is, what opportunities are, and how they have those play out. Like, there's not like a like, million spots for everyone. And I think the, I think as more and more like, how do you say it? Like uh, born and bred Americans start getting online and making content about their, their own stories, not like cultural commentary content about other people's stories, but like content about their own stories it will start to become very clear, like the like skillless population that everyone believes that we have. Obviously we have like a lot, people here have a lot of skills and ability to do certain things. And I think that there are some populations specifically, I think this is very prevalent in black America and this guy's like a black father, but it's like, he clearly doesn't understand how to take care of himself. <laughs> So these are like two adults who don't know how to take care of them or they don't have the funds to take care of themselves. Like, let me not say that they don't know how, but they don't have the money to do it at the moment. And now they have six dependents to do it. I feel like maybe we need more 
like clear outlines of like income requirements for birth or something like you need to be like I don't know if he's the only person working and he's working full time but let's just say he's like a minimum wage worker he might make like oh hold on a second 